Great, thanks of, to those of you who joined early. So just one more reminder. Um, so your audio and video have automatically been disabled. Um, there is a question and answer function at the bottom of your screen. And we encourage you to ask us questions throughout our session today. And we'll be uh, responding to those in the Q&A section of the, the Zoom platform on a rolling basis throughout the session. And uh, lastly, just must bear repeating one more time that the, the session will be recorded and that the views and opinions presented today belong to the presenters and do not represent the views of the US government or Department of State. And with that, let's get things started. So it's our great pleasure to welcome you today to the Fulbright Teacher Exchanges webinar for US teacher applicants. Uh, my name is Peter Bowler, and I'll be one of your hosts for today's webinar. Before we jump into talking about the different Fulbright Teacher Exchanges open for US educators, we would like to invite our colleague at the US Department of State's Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs, Kayla Gadalisha, to share a welcome and get us started. Over to you, Kayla. Thanks, Peter, and thank you everybody who's tuning in today to learn more about the Fulbright Teacher Exchanges. Um, on behalf of the Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs at the U.S. Department of State, I'm very pleased to welcome you all to today's session and to get started with your Fulbright Teacher application. Um, just note that today's session will focus only on opportunities for educators in the United States. So anybody who may be um, abroad right now, uh, this webinar is just about programs for um, U.S. educators. That means those who live and work in the United States, a U.S. territory, or with the Department of Defense Education activity. Um, so if you are a teacher in another country, you can go ahead and pop over to our website for more information on opportunities that you qualify for. You can also contact the U.S. Embassy or Fulbright Commission in your country for more information on those opportunities. And our website is FulbrightTeacherExchanges.org. Um, the U.S. Department of State is the sponsor of the Fulbright program, and um, that program has been going for over 75 years. So uh, throughout this session, you'll hear from program staff about the application process for the Fulbright Teacher Exchanges and the different components of each of our opportunities for U.S. teachers to participate in these incredible exchanges. Um, we'll be joined by a few of our alumni who will also share their personal experiences and recommendations, tips and tricks to help you along while the application is open for a few more weeks. Um, so with that, uh, I invite you, please pop your questions into the Q&A and we'll keep track of those um, as we go along and we'll try to save some time at the end too. So I'll pass it back to uh, Peter and we can continue. Thanks everyone. Great, thank you, Kayla. So just to visualize here our agenda. So first, as Kayla mentioned, we'll be giving you an overview of the different Fulbright teacher exchanges that are currently being recruited for for US educators. Um, second, we'll be getting into a, an alumni panel discussion. And lastly, we'll be ending with a question and answer session where we'll be able to answer some of your questions uh, verbally. Um, <clears throat> and we do really look forward to answering your questions. We know a lot of you have joined today because you have some of those specific questions unique to your situation. So please do drop those in the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. And uh, my colleagues will um, be answering those in, on a rolling basis in, in the, in the Q&A section. Um, so typing out the answers. So be patient though, they'll get to your questions, um, but it might take them a moment as we uh, get through our content today. So um, moving along, understanding Fulbright Teacher Exchanges. So for more than 75 years, Fulbright Teacher Exchanges, as part of the family of offerings within the greater Fulbright program, have offered opportunities for educators to learn, teach, consult, observe, and collaborate in classrooms and schools abroad. Through these professional learning programs, elementary and secondary educators and school administrators in the United States and all around the world develop their educational practice and bring global knowledge, skills, and perspectives to their learning communities. The U.S. Department of State's Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs is the body that oversees the Fulbright program operations throughout the world. It does so with funds appropriated by the U.S. Congress, and the mission of the Bureau is to build relationships between the people of the United States and the people of other countries through academic exchanges, including programs for youth and educators, and also through cultural, sports, and professional exchanges. In total, 
The Bureau supports more than 55,000 exchange participants in more than 140 different programs, including Fulbright Teacher Exchanges, and is actively building a global network of citizens around the world who understand the United States and U.S. citizens who understand the wider world, all of whom can be partners in solving global challenges. Now, I'm going to hand it over to our other host today, uh, my colleague Anna, who will start introducing the specifics of some of the different Fulbright Teacher Exchanges. Over to you, Anna. Thank you, Peter. So yeah, let's start by reviewing the basics of Fulbright Teacher Exchanges. Uh, throughout this webinar, we're going to discuss four different fully funded Fulbright programs that you can apply to as a US K through 12 educator. We will go over the differences in each um, in more detail throughout the presentation. But first, I want to start out by sharing the similarities. So in each Fulbright Teacher Exchange, the award includes round trip airfare to and from the host country, uh, visa support if your host country requires a visa, support for accommodations, meals, and incidentals throughout the duration of the program. Uh, the exact setup and um, financial support depends on um, how long you're abroad. It also provides accident and sickness medical coverage as a supplement to your, to your regular health insurance. Uh, it provides professional development opportunities, uh, such as online courses, support in conducting research, seminars, um, or other opportunities at, opportunities at an international university, and so on. And then finally, uh, as an alumni of Fulbright Teacher Exchanges, you will join a network of global educators, and you will be eligible to apply for future alumni grants to enhance and sustain your engagement in this community. Each Fulbright Teacher Exchange for U.S. educators has a competitive selection process for applicants. The application itself varies slightly between each program, but regardless of which program you choose, you must meet a certain set of eligibility criteria. Applications are reviewed by an independent panel of experts according to a rubric of evaluation criteria. To be eligible to apply, you must be a citizen of the United States, you must reside and work in the US, a US territory, or a school associated with the Department of Defense education activity, you must hold at least a bachelor's degree, you must have a minimum of three years of experience in a full-time student-facing role in a U.S. K-12 educational institution or school district. We'll come back to this definition a little bit later. And you must also be currently employed in such a role. So for those last two points about employment, um, I will note that this program, these programs are not limited to classroom teachers. Eligible educators do include classroom teachers, but we also welcome applications from guidance counselors, curriculum coordinators, special ed coordinators, media specialists, librarians, gifted and talented coordinators, and others who spend a minimum of 50% of their contracted hours in a student facing role. I will also note that the eligibility criteria vary a little bit for our Fulbright teacher exchanges for US school administrators. So if you are an administrator, we're very glad that you're here and we'll talk a little bit more later about the program that we have that may be appropriate for you. In an effort to reflect the diversity of the US and global society, the Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs programs, funding and other activities, encourage the involvement of US and international applicants from traditionally underrepresented groups, including women, racial and ethnic minorities, and people with disabilities. Uh, opportunities are open to people regardless of their race, color, national origin, sex, age, religion, socioeconomic status, disability, sexual orientation, or gender identity. The Bureau is committed to fairness, equality, and inclusion. We invite you to visit our website to read more about the eligibility criteria and to learn more about the preferred qualifications for each individual program. If you have specific programs about your eligibility after you've reviewed what's online and after the conclusion of this webinar, please don't hesitate to email us at the address on your screen, fulbrightteach at irx.org. So now let's uh, jump into talking about the four programs that are currently available to US K through 12 educators. The first three are for K through 12 educators, not administrators. Um, those are the Fulbright Teachers for Global Classrooms program, the Fulbright Distinguished Awards in Teaching Research program, and the Fulbright Distinguished Awards in Teaching short-term program. The fourth is the Fulbright Leaders for Global Schools program, which is the program that is open um, to and created for US K through 12 school or district level administrators. We'll start off with uh, the Fulbright Teachers for Global Classrooms program. This program is unique among these programs because it is a year-long professional, professional learning opportunity with a short-term exchange component. Its aim is to build teachers' capacity to, to develop their students' global competence. 
Great. The program begins with a cohort-based global education online course in the fall. This is a 10-week graduate-level online course that combines simultaneous and self-paced coursework and is led by experts in the field of global education. It is a thoughtful and rigorous experience with opportunities built in throughout the course for practical application in collaboration with other educators. Following the online course, there's a symposium which brings together the full cohort for a workshop in Washington, DC to build networks, collaborate further, and develop strategies to enhance global learning. The year-long Fulbright Teachers for Global Classrooms program is an international field, um, pardon me, year-long Fulbright Teachers for Global Classrooms program features an international field experience in the spring or summer for two to three weeks. This is a group travel experience and it provides an opportunity to, ex to experience another country's history, education system, and culture. These experiences include classroom visits, interactions with teachers and administrators, and opportunities to co-teach and host schools. The cohort-based model of this program allows time for reflection with your colleagues before returning to the United States. And then finally, after the field experience, the last component of the Fulbright Teachers for Global Classrooms program is the Global Education Guide. This is a capstone project that serves as a resource for your local school community to build global awareness and mutual understanding. It's a tool for you to share your experiences with colleagues, facilitate professional learning workshops, and engage students and community members with your Fulbright experience. In order to apply for the Fulbright Teachers for Global Classrooms program, you will be asked to, to complete a series of essay questions related to your existing experience with global education and how your school community would benefit from your participation in the program. And I will pass it back to Peter now to talk about our Distinguished Awards programs. Great, thanks, Anna. All right, so the second opportunity we're talking about today for US educators is the Fulbright Distinguished Awards in Teaching Research Program. Uh, the Fulbright Distinguished Awards in Teaching Research Program as a, compared to the short-term program, which we'll talk about in just a moment. So for this research program, educators spend three to six months overseas collaborating with colleagues and pursuing research as part of their self-directed individual research projects. So there are no restrictions on the range of research project themes that an applicant can, can propose in their application. In the past, for example, research project themes have included STEM topics, global competence topics, uh, topics that look into arts and music education in different countries, pedagogical approaches, learning management, uh, language education and cultural education in different countries, social studies, uh, the way math is taught in different countries, um, social justice matters, uh, social emotional learning, etc., among many other topics. So to be clear, this is these are topics that applicants, some of whom may be yourselves, come up on your come up with on your own and propose in your applications. If selected for the research program, participants gather for a professional learning orientation workshop. Uh, this has often been held in Washington D.C. and during the pandemic was held virtually. At this workshop, participants meet with other participants in their cohort and program alumni to further develop strategies for carrying out their research project and for designing and implementing the research pro process while they're abroad. The main component of this program then is the international experience in the host country, taking place over a three to six month period in either a fall or spring school semester. This is the time and during which the participant carries out the research for the research project. And unlike other cohort-based models, participants travel independently to their host country where they pursue research into their project with guidance from a faculty advisor at their host institution, most often a university, but can also include a nonprofit or an NGO. They may also take courses at their host institution pertaining to the professional goals of the subject of their research project, for example, if they're placed at a university. Another unique feature of this research program is that participants are allowed to have family members accompany them during their time in their host country. In addition to the support of the host institution and a faculty advisor, participants will also have a US-based educational consultant supporting them remotely throughout the program. So this is someone that the program hires and consults with to work with directly the participants to help them refine, adapt, and carry out their research projects while abroad. And as part of the application process for the research program, as mentioned earlier, you must prepare a research project proposal for the specific participating country to which you'd like to travel and carry out your research. 
And if you're accepted, the Fulbright Teacher Exchanges team in the United States and in your host country will help you to identify your host institution and connect you to, your in to, in to other in-country educators, provide logistical support, and help you conduct your research. Now, moving on to the next program. So we just talked about the Distinguished Awards in Teaching Research Program. This, this third one we're talking about is the Distinguished Awards in Teaching Short-Term Program. Please note that currently this program is not being recruited for. However, we do look forward to opening an application for this program likely in late 2024. So similar to the research program, the short-term program is an individual experience. So it's not a cohort-based model where you travel with a group, you'll be going on your own. It differs, however, in that participants travel overseas for only two to six weeks, whereas the research program, just to reiterate, was for three to six months. And in the two to six weeks, that time is spent supporting specific projects at educational institutions in that host country. These projects are identified in advance by U.S. embassies and Fulbright commissions abroad, and they seek to meet specific educational needs of the host country. Projects can range broadly and can, for example, be working directly with a group of teachers at a school to, on a macro level, advising a country's Ministry of Education on educational policy in that country. There truly is a very wide range of different kinds of projects. This program endeavors to send highly qualified expert educators to share their experience and expertise to fulfill the needs identified by these different educational institutions for the benefit of the K-12 education community in that host country. Participants selected for the short-term program participate in an online pre-departure and skill building orientation. And then upon arrival in the host country, after a country specific briefing at the Fulbright Commission or the US Embassy, start working immediately to fulfill the needs of the project and immersing themselves in the community of the host institution. So now we've just finished talking about the first three programs. These are the three programs that are open for US K through 12 educators. Now we're gonna talk about the last of our four programs. This is the program for school administrators. This program is called the Fulbright Leaders for Global Schools. It's the newest program in the suite of Fulbright Teacher Exchanges and differs from the rest as previously mentioned because it's just for school administrators. So school administrators, meaning principals, assistant principals, superintendents, assistant superintendents, et cetera. So the participants of this program travel abroad as a group for approximately 10 days to learn about best educational practices in the host country with the goal of improving outcomes for, all, for their students back in the US. Previous countries that Fulbright Leaders for Global Schools participants have traveled to include Singapore, Finland, and Germany. When on program in their host country, participants in the Fulbright Leaders for Global Schools program engage in briefings, panel discussions, and events to better understand the education system of the host country and to explore educational and professional topics of relevance to school administrators. Program activities include visits to schools and other educational institutions, roundtable discussions and networking events with educational leaders in their host country, and cultural excursions. And with that, I'm going to pass it back over to Anna. Thank you, Peter. So the slide that's up now contains a brief overview of the distinctions between all four of these Fulbright Teacher Exchanges programs that we have just reviewed. I'll do a quick recap here before we transition into our alumni discussion. So the Fulbright Teachers for Global Classrooms, again, is a cohort-based training and professional learning opportunity that takes place over the course of a year, 12 months. It includes a graduate level online course in global education and a short-term group-led experience abroad, in addition to a short symposium in Washington, DC, and a capstone project. On the Fulbright T Distinguished Awards for Teaching Research Program, participants complete an individual research program, um, pardon me, research project of your own choosing, uh, you would spend three to six months abroad researching and completing this project. One important note is that due to the extended nature of this exchange, dependents are eligible to travel with you on this program, Fulbright Distinguished Awards in Teaching Research. Um, the travel for the other three programs is much shorter and um, dependents are not supported to travel on those programs. The Fulbright Distinguished Awards in Teaching short-term program gives an opportunity for educators to act as consultants on projects at an educational institution abroad. 
Uh, finally, a friendly reminder for right now that we are uh, applications to this program are not currently open, but we do expect that they will reopen probably towards the end of this year. And then finally, the program for school and district level administrators is the Fulbright Leaders for Global Schools program. This is an opportunity for administrators to learn and share best educational practices with each other and across borders. Uh, please do note as you're considering um, whether any of these programs might be a good fit for you that each applicant may only apply to one program per application cycle. We do in invite and encourage you to visit our website, uh, FulbrightTeacherExchanges.org, to read more details about each of these programs and to determine which one might be right for you. You can also sign up to join our mailing list for application announcements and updates. And if you have any questions about selecting a program or about your eligibility, you are welcome to contact us at any time at fulbrightteach at irx.org. So with that, I will pass the mic back to Peter to introduce our alumni, and we're very pleased to have them here. Great. Thank you so much, Anna. So it's my great pleasure now to uh, introduce our three Fulbright Teacher Exchanges alumni who are joining us today. Just give me a second while I change the view we're working on here. So today we are joined by Fallon Abel, who participated in the Fulbright Distinguished Awards in Teaching Research Program, Darlene Dehan, who participated in the Fulbright Leaders for Global Schools Program, and Akte Inse, who participated in the Fulbright uh, Teachers for Global Classrooms Program. So we have several questions already planned in advance uh, that have been submitted by our audience, but just to start things off, we'd like to give each of you a few minutes to introduce yourself, um, and in doing so, could you please share brief, briefly where you're from, uh, what you do, and then tell us about your Fulbright program experience and how it's impacted you. Um, so please, over to you, Akte, uh, to get us started. <clears throat> Hi, uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Akte. I'm a part of the Fulbright Teacher for Global Classroom uh, 2023 to Uruguay. I just returned from the summer. Um, so... Um, the overall experience were so uh, um, thrilling in a way that in a teacher for global classroom, you have four different uh, sets. One, you have a graduate level course at the beginning of the uh, year, and then you have a symposium, you have a, a field experiences, two weeks in, internationally, and then a capstone. And each has a, a, a tremendous amount of learning opportunity to uh, get uh, a wealth of global education information throughout the cohort, so um, I will give it more. I will give more detail about that, but um, I, I will pass on to our my colleagues uh, once again. Um, but I will make sure that I share a lot of the great strategies and tips uh, with within my program. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Akte. Uh, over to you, Fallon, please. Hi, I'm Fallon Abel. Um, I am a teacher here in central Vermont at a school called the Sharon Academy. And so we teach uh, grades seven through 12, about 150, 160 students. And I did the Fulbright Distinguished Awards in Teaching long-term program in Finland. And so I was there from January a year ago, exactly, uh, until July this summer, so for six months. And my project um, was a research project that was looking at how we can develop ways to teach teenagers social emotional skills proactively before they're struggling with a lot of the mental health issues that we're seeing in schools right now. Um, and yeah, I'm very honored to be on this panel. There were like so many amazing teachers who coached me on my application. So I'm happy to help anyone however I can. Great. Thank you, Fallon. Uh, over to you, Darlene. Hello, everyone. My name is Darlene. And I am a director of curriculum and instruction in this part of Southern New Jersey. I originally was supposed to have gone to Singapore in 2019, but COVID uh, uh, raised its head. So I actually just came back in 2022. I was, I was for the first cohort for the Fulbright, Fulbright Leaders of Global Education. It was a phenomenal, phenomenal experience as, an, as a, a leader, right? As a building leader, as a district leader, because you are able to speak with other leaders and to see how the country actually um, did curriculum and instruction and they addressed issues from special education to STEM education, which is my passion. I am math, science, and STEM. And to take that on a global scale, 
so how we can make our, our students globally competent. So I look very much forward to um, speaking to everyone out there, those administrators who are looking for that opportunity, and it definitely is life-changing. So thank you, I look forward to it. Great, thank you, Darlene. Well, we have a few questions prepared here, um, and feel free to come off mute and, and answer in, in whatever order you'd like. Uh, but so first, we're joined by a room of people who are interested in Fulbright teacher exchanges, um, hoping to apply. Uh, you were probably in their shoes once upon a time. Um, what inspired you to apply, uh, and why did you choose the program that you chose? I can go next. Uh, <clears throat> so um, I'm I'm an educator who wants to go above and beyond always. And I want to make sure I learned as much as I can as an educator so that I can be a best educator to my uh, students. Now, Fulbright is one of the, um, the best available professional development that one educator could have. That was my first uh, initial thought of applying for Fulbright exchanges. The second was to make sure that I get that global education trainings by the uh, IRX and Fulbright uh, Department of State. So it's the stakes are high, uh, and that was something that I always wanted to have. And uh, and uh, you know, and now after my uh, program from the Uruguay, um, I, I was uh, I, I can't stop myself doing lots of other things and uh, inspired by the program itself. So I, I really strongly encourage you to, even if you have a thought about yourself, go ahead and apply. And you never know how your career trajectory will change in a way, as well as the success that you may have for your students and community. I'm happy to jump into. So for me, I actually, I last year was a social studies teacher and had primarily been that before. Um, but especially coming out of the pandemic, the level of mental health issues I was seeing my students struggle with in my school, it was just really clear like that our current approach of just, you know, hoping counselors could intervene would be helpful. And so many of my colleagues were struggling with figuring out like, how can we teach academics, you know, content to kids who really are not okay. And so many teachers who like didn't have any training in mental health were having to be sort of like first responders. Um, so my project was really designed around like, how can we proactively equip kids with better social emotional skills um, so that they can actually learn in schools. And um, you know, that was really kind of the impetus behind my project and just feeling like that I didn't have the skills I needed to be doing what I was being asked. And so having this opportunity to go to Finland and to learn from so many different educators and researchers about, you know, strategies they were trying and the things that they were struggling with was so helpful in terms of informing the, the work I'm doing now at my school. And also, um, for those of you who are administrators out there, I strongly, strongly encourage you to encourage your teachers to apply. Um, the reason being is because although we are administrators at the district level, our focus is still on student achievement within our district. We still directly impact students and the way that we directly impact students is through our teachers and the professional development and training opportunities that we can provide our teachers. So please encourage your teachers in your schools to apply because then you also are indirectly improving the academic achievement of the students um, in your school and in your district. Great, thanks everyone. Um, so my next question, uh, looking back, what is one of your best memories from your Fulbright teacher exchanges uh, experience? Uh, what moment last left uh, the greatest lasting impression uh, today as, as you think back? Um, that might inspire someone who's thinking about applying today? <laughs> oh gosh, that's a difficult question. We have so many. Um, so um, in the Teacher for Global Classroom program, as as, as it mentioned earlier, um, you have a graduate level course for a semester. In that semester, you at the end, you create a kind of a capstone project where um, you can implement it in your classroom. So I created a project called uh, a local water management and then how they can, uh, how students can use uh, local water resources in a, in a global mindset level as well. 
So I, uh, what I did was uh, after the creation of that unit, I uh, submitted that uh, for a NOAA uh, grant and it's accepted. So they were, they delighted to have that unit plan. Um, and I, um, I was happy to bring my students back to Costa Rica to study um, marine mammals for nine days. It was like a historical moment for our district. And that's just one. And then two, uh, when I take, when I took my uh, principal with me to the symposium, um, he was very inspired. He was like, the, I can do a lot of things with the global education. And, and after that, he applied for the leaders for global schools and he got selected. So he, uh, he went to Germany, he just returned from Germany last November. And now from that experience, we are going to Rhode Island to uh, learn about work-based learning from the, another participant who is doing a lot of work-based learning. So it's lots of lots of things if within a year. We have lots of experience and I was like, I can't believe that how um, after, even if during the Fulbright experience, how after that creates lots of lots of fruits for our education uh, uh, setting. So that's from me. Okay, I'll jump in. Mm -hmm. I have the uh, administrative lens, but um, I think one of the biggest things, just like um, Okay had said, is that it's just so many things, right? So if I have to tailor it down to one, I think we as administrators, it's going to be, I got a lot of confirmation that a lot of the things that we were doing and implementing in our district, they also implemented. So I think for me, it was this, okay, you know, if Singapore, the number one, you know, country in the world for, for math and science, pretty much up there with Finland, um, or doing some of the same strategies, it just really gave me that confirmation. But also, I would say it was to learn that even schools that are on the top have some of the very same issues that we're struggling with here in the U.S., and just like Fallon, you said, with social emotional learning, that impacted the world. So to be able to speak with them and to be able to share ideas as to what they're doing to address social emotional learning, what we're doing in our districts and in the United States addressing social emotional learning, it was just a wonderful conversation because it was confirmation that, you know, everyone all kids and adults were suffering from the same issues of COVID-19 and to be able to share that and have those conversations and resources and solutions that they applied was, was wonderful for me to have as an administrator. Thanks, Darlene. Yeah, I definitely echo that, like that feeling of confirmation of like just hearing from so many teachers and students that like there was this similarity in the struggles. Um, but I would say like what first came to my mind when Peter asked the question is actually like kind of a very different tangent, but um, it's for me, it was a lot about the relationships I built with other teachers. Um, and one of the pieces of advice I was given early on was like, say yes to everything and that you'll actually do a lot of learning in the places you don't expect to learn. And so one of um, sort of like my favorite memories was uh, one of the Finnish Fulbright teachers. So someone who had come to the US on a Fulbright um, invited me after I'd been spending time at her school, she invited me to go on a uh, ski backpacking trip in the middle of winter in Finland with her and a group of some other teachers and other just, you know, people in Finland. And, you know, we were camping for I think five or six days and it was a really amazing experience to start to understand some of the like more nuanced cultural differences, but also to just have time to really, to, to, experience parts of Finnish culture that definitely impacts social emotional wellness, you know, just the the time spent in nature and the connection to the natural world was really kind of an interesting component to my understanding of what I was seeing in schools and just knowing how prevalent that is in so many of the kids' lives is still that connection to nature and thinking about that in relation to my students and my school. Great, thank you, Fallon and Octay and Darlene for that. Um, our next question has to do with the application itself. Um, if you can think back to those days when you were still learning about the program and applying to it, what part of the application was most challenging for you? Um, and what practical tips or tricks would you have, would you share for, for completing the application and um, answering uh, some of the questions in it? Okay, so, um... <clears throat> 
when I think back, um, the, one of the things that I strongly encourage for any educators to think about how you bring your global education mindset to the classroom. So think about um, a, a local setting and where you are at, what some of the things you do locally, as well as how you can project that to the global scale. So if you think about any projects or you think about any ideas or proposals within your community, then start from there. I think um, a lot of questions they're asking in the application uh, will be tend to towards that. So as long as you have really good idea of how you can implement global education within your community, that you should be fine. Um, and um, I think there was one question uh, somebody asked in the chat where how you can uh, get your administration on board. That's also, it's up to you how you can justify the things, the learning experiences to the, your community, your teaching uh, practices to your administration. I think any administration, if they hear or see that you're really having a solid uh, 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 proposal to them, they'll be say yes, even if it's within the academic year. So, but if you don't have an idea or you're struggling of what you should bring, then I think you should be doing some, um, maybe a homework or some a background knowledge so that you can not only have a strong application, but also you can have a justification to your administration of your um, uh, your leave if you uh, have to leave within the academic year. So that would be my um, best advice. Something that was really helpful for me, like for the, uh, the Fulbright DA, you have to have a project proposal. And I had known about this program for a while and I didn't apply, even though I was interested because I didn't feel like I had a project idea that felt like really, really deeply meaningful and compelling until last year when I applied. Um, and one of the pieces of advice that helped me in my application was to have a really compelling reason why this particular project and why going to this particular country is essential for the research you want to do. Um, so that really helped me. And then another piece that was helpful was like in my application wasn't just written like I wrote it, but it was a sort of collective thought process of several teachers in my school, including some of our administration about like, what do we really need? What are the like things that we as a school want to get out of this experience and so like in terms of also getting administration on board having my administration be connected to the whole application pro process and thinking about like this is not just me wanting this you know professional development experience for myself but kind of like me as a vessel of learning for our entire school community and that in terms of my administration supporting my leave was um, just incredible because they gave me so much support um, even though it was very difficult for them as a school to find the funding they still found a way to do it yes and i can echo pretty much what both um okay and fallon had said is the fact that as an administrator you need to think what changes or things that you because we have to think district-wide right so you really need to think of what parts do I do I feel that we need the most and that where I would like to make this change? Because you have to be focused as to what changes you want to make. And for the administrator application, it also has to include what things you you have tried to do and the out those outcomes and what how you feel that this experience will help you improve on that so that you can bring it back and improve what's happening within your district. I work with low income and in a, in a, what we call Title I, a low income district and high minority and bilingual students. So my focus was STEM, right? How can I improve STEM um, education and abilities for students whose first language is not English? So that became my focus. And then once I knew what my, my focus was, then I was able to put that into the application. So there has to be something that you find overall overarching in your district that you want to improve and how can this country, and of course, Singapore, like I said, is number one, how can that country, that opportunity in that country help you achieve that goal? Great, thanks all three. Um, I, I, my next question, some of you sort of started alluding to in your answers, but um, it has to do with how you got your school administration on board for participating in this program. 
I mean, especially the, the Fulbright Distinguished Awards and Teaching Research Program, where you might leave for up to six months, um, it can be a hard pill to swallow for some administrators to grant that much leave. But even some schools who are stretched for uh, in staffing needs, you know, sending a teacher away for two to three weeks can also be a big ask. Um, so Octane Fallon from the perspective of a participant, uh, but Darlene, you know, also from the perspective of an administrator, what what advice would you or tips or, or insight would you give to those who are thinking about applying, but concerned that their school administrators might not um, be as enthusiastic as they are about the, the program? Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, you really want to make sure that you justify what some of the benefits to the school. Even you have to leave for six months, but you really have to think big. What are some of the uh, benefits of the program to the administration? You have to show them um, in, in a way that they have to blown away and say, yes, you should go and bring those experiences back to the classroom or the uh, larger as a community. So um, it really you really want to make sure that you have those uh, justification to your administration. And I think most of the part, when they understand that you will make a big impact, they will say yes. I, I don't think any administration will say no to the justifications that you you brought to them. And then what, the other things that I wanted to mention uh, related to the previous question was that you really, um, you really have to show your passion to the, into your application as well. When you show your uh, passion in your application, make sure you specify the things you've done so far and then add to that. You need this experience so that you, you go to the next level. So not just say, I plan to do this, I hope to do this, but rather show them what you've been doing and what some of the missing pieces into your profession so that uh, the, uh, the reviewers will see that you need this and you have to go forward. And then show those to your administrations too, so that they know there is a missing part, so that that missing part will be filled with Fulbright uh, Teacher Exchange Program. Um, my suggestion would be find an advocate on your administration and have them involved as early as possible. Um, I think if you have your administration at least on board on in some capacity while you're applying, that it makes it much more likely that you're going to get support if you do get accepted. Um, the other thing I'd say is like find ways to make a transition as easy as possible. So when I left last year, I was part of a team of three teachers that were the only three full time teachers running a middle school. So like stepping away was an incredible burden for my colleagues. But because we had been having conversations about how to manage the transition the whole time that made it more possible. And like the fact that I was able to also simultaneously, like in the six months leading up to my departure before during the school year, last school year, I was also training my substitute teacher and thought about a, it as a way, like working with a, a local teacher education program as a way to kind of like, you know, have a teacher, uh, you know, student step into that role. So it was like, how do we, use a lot of different resources to make this possible and then the fact that like my students stayed connected to me while I was abroad also was a big selling point like I had a blog going it was like incorporated into their social studies class we would have like questions and learning opportunities and you know I took my cat with me and so the kids like needed to know what my cat was up to in Finland and so you know they're learning about the Finnish political system and parliamentary elections in order to see cat photos, you know, like there were fun ways that um, I think for my administration, it also like was something unique that was happening in our school that wasn't happening in other local schools. And in our area, we have school choice uh, because we're a really rural area. And so, you know, that sort of thing helps motivate students and families choose to come to our school, which is important in a state that's losing a lot of uh, enrollment numbers. Wow, that sounds amazing. Um, I would say from the administrative standpoint, because we're one, right? So we're one person. So when we leave, even though it's for 10 days, it's a huge burden. But what I would say to administrators is one word, data. Um, to be able to look at the data, you take the data from your school, you take the data that's coming from the, the, the countries that are a possibility that like you can attend to um, and make that connection. Right. And secondly, and most importantly, is to talk about how your experiences are going to feed into the district professional development plan. 
because now it becomes, I'm going to take this and how are you going to deliverables? What deliverables are you going to bring back to the district? So you really need to think in, through, in that lens, but data is going to support your actions. So you got to think through data, professional development plan, and how these two things together with this opportunity is going to help increase student achievement for your district. Great, yeah, thank you. I was going to echo what Darlene said. Sorry to interrupt, Peter. But like the um, professional development piece was also really important to my application. Um, that was part of the administration agreeing was like I was going to come back and lead professional development for the whole school and actually um, design some curriculum that we're implementing on a school wide level. And I know that that was um, really key. Great, thanks. So now we're gonna switch gears just a little bit from questions that we've had pre-prepared to the questions that some of you have posed in the Q&A function on Zoom. Um, so to get us started, I'm gonna focus on a, a question uh, posed to you, Fallon. Um, in fact, there's two and I'm gonna try to join them together. Uh, so the first is, was going to Finland a decision that you made on your own or was Finland assigned to you? Um, and if it was your choice, was that because knowledge that you had previously had about um, social emotional learning um, in Finland, or were there other factors that led to that choice? And then in conducting your research, um, did it center around observing um, or how did, was it qualitative or was it quantitative, experiential? Uh, what kind of research did you do and what kind of um, outcomes did you reach and how did you use your research? Okay, I'll try to, <laughs> answer all of that. If I miss parts, Peter, please remind me. Sure. Um, so I, I did choose Finland. Um, I didn't like before starting my research about applying to this program, I didn't know I would want to go to Finland, but I like knew of this program and I looked at the countries that were supporting uh, the extended DA Fulbright. And then in reading the country profiles, I was looking for, all right, which of these possible options has research that's focusing on social emotional learning happening and so Finland um, definitely had that as one of their focuses and they also had um, transversal competencies as one of their focus and so a trans for them that means that these particular areas one of which included social emotional learning or their version of it it are meant to be incorporated in all subjects across all age levels and so I was very curious because so often social emotional learning focuses on primary school. And my focus was particularly this question of how do we do effective social emotional learning for secondary students who tend to be resistant to it. Um, and so, yeah, it was in doing that research that I looked at Finland. And then as I was doing my application, I was looking on Google Scholar and JSTOR to see what research was being conducted by Finnish researchers related to secondary level social emotional learning. Um, and as I was reading those articles, you know, it made it more and more clear that yes, the questions I'm asking are questions that people in Finland are grappling with. Um, so that kind of shaped why I applied to Finland. And then in terms of my research there, it was a really interesting process because, you know, one of the quick realities that I discovered upon getting there, and I was um, hosted by the University of Helsinki is, you know, there's all this material written about the transversal competencies and then when I got there, the researchers were like, yes, it's all good in theory, but the reality on the ground is that most teachers aren't doing this um, because, you know, it was written in 2019 and then a pandemic happened. And so like very little had actually be, been implemented. And so a lot of the problems I was coming to Finland saying, here are problems, I'm looking for your solutions. They were like, we have the same problems and we don't have solutions yet. Um, so a lot of my research was observational of just seeing what's happening in classes, but then do, conducting a lot of interviews with students, with teachers, with guidance counselors, with researchers who had been like really kind of gathering data on this for a longer period um, to see what from my project in particular, because the solutions weren't there, I wanted to have a strong understanding of like, what are the barriers that are preventing effective social emotional learning to happen? And so my my collection of data was more qualitative. And then I kind of boiled that down into an understanding of, okay, here are the key barriers. And so how can I develop something for my school that proactively addresses these barriers um, to hopefully create something that's effective? 
So I hope that answered all of the questions. And if not, please let me know. Good job tailing it. I think you hit the nail on the head. Um, so we have another question about the, the Fulbright for Teachers in Global Classrooms program. So Octay, you might be uh, best poised to answer this, but you, um, you mentioned a few times uh, a graduate level class that you took. Um, what was that class? What did you learn in that class and, and how did it link up to the symposium and to your eventual travel to Uruguay? And mm -hmm. then um, now your, your, your role back in the classroom in, in, in the U.S.? Right. So, um, so once you get selected, um, within a month or so, you're, you're enrolled with a graduate class level course, which is very intensive. Every week you have at least three or five assignments. And every week there's a theme of a topic, let's say uh, global education resources or local experiences. So every week you have a theme that you work on with an assignment. So um, I, I, I think one of the things that um, uh, it was really helpful, like you have an access to a lot of resources and tools that you may not even be aware of it at the first place. So by end of the, uh, as I mentioned it earlier, by, by the end of the, graduate course, um, the unit plan that I created, I it was like phenomenal. I can't, I, I, I wasn't sure it will be in that shape because you get peer feedback, you get experts feedback. And then at the end you have a, a product where you can use it in the classroom. And uh, you know, um, and, and then the getting the grant itself with, from the NOAA about the water uh, conservation was another uh, pinpoint for me. It was like, you know, you, when you apply, you never know that what will happen. And then they were impressed and, and they provided us $25,000 to get eight students and two colleagues of mine to the Costa Rica to study. So it was, it was phenomenal. And, and one of the things that also uh, mentioned that uh, going to the symposium and I think it was in February, if, if not, I'm not mistaken, my principal wasn't sure about really about global education, how it looks like, you know? And um, after that, he was like, oh, I can't, I can do this. I can bring that back to my district, my school. And, and that's how it, he is inspired by applying for the Global Leaders Program. And then it, that leads to the international. So my my trip to Uruguay was during the summer. So my, other, my, other my friends in the cohort went to Morocco. It was in March and Colombia somewhere, I, I forgot when, but Colombia, Ghana, and um, um, I forgot. Oh, Morocco, yes. So mine was during the summer. So I went to Uruguay in, in July, no, June, and then uh, bring back uh, during the August, we did the capstone. So uh, that's another step of the global, uh, global classroom where you create a blogging where you can share your travel experiences and the resources you learn through the graduate course and resources you learn from your uh, field experiences. So it was my first time creating a blog and it was fascinating. I couldn't believe myself that I can really create a professional blogging. So thanks to my colleagues and, uh, and experts in the Fulbright. So um, again, it's a full year of an experience, not just you get it, you go to the Uruguay or you go to the international field trip in other countries, but rather it's a whole year of the process. I hope I answered the question. Great job. Thank you, Akte. Um, so we just have a five or six more minutes um, until we'll convene. Um, so, uh, so with just a few minutes left, we want to take you three panelists back to um, before you applied to your Fulbright. Um, imagine you were interested in the program, what what advice with what you know now would you have given to yourself back then um, to help you with the application? You obviously did something right because <laughs> you got the Fulbright, but if you had to say something to that person applying um, that with what you know now, what would you, what would you say to them? I mean, I think for me it was, um reach out to other people and involve other teachers and let people see your unfinished work. It was very humbling because like, obviously I make my students share works in progress all the time. 
And um, for me, that was very hard, but it was actually incredibly helpful to get perspectives from a lot of different people on what I was interested in researching and, you know, how I was presenting the the research that I was interested in doing. So that was really helpful to have people giving me feedback throughout the process. Great advice. Thanks. Um, Darlene Octay? Yeah. Um, okay. I would say if you know of anyone, I'm pretty much piggybacking off of Fallon, if you know anyone who has been involved in the Fulbright program, to talk to them, but really read the website, really understand from the Fulbright website what it truly entails and, you know, all the fine print and to really understand what the expectation is so that you'll have a better understanding so that you can bring that into the application. But if you know someone that you are, who's a friend of a friend of a friend who has experienced the Fulbright program, speak to them about their experiences and maybe what things surprise them that they're brought back so that you can think through a different lens. But definitely scour the website, really understand what the Fulbright program is about so that you can match what things are on the website with like, um, okay said like with your passion and to make that a match so that you'll know that this program is for you. My last thought would be please believe in yourself and go ahead and apply. Don't be afraid of saying it's so overwhelming and intense. No, just work. Start somewhere and craft your proposals, craft your ideas, speak with people. Um, I'm sure you will have a lot of obstacles on your way, whether it be your administrator, whether it be your student, whether it be your family even, but I'm sure if you put your passion into it and and if you have that thought in mind saying, I want to do these things, and I think, I'm, uh, I, I believe, I strongly believe that things will work it out just fine. Um, put, just start somewhere, go along the way and click submit. Uh, and, and I'm sure people will, uh, appreciate your ideas in the application. And because I'm sure the reviewers will want to see your passion through your application and, and they wanted to support you. Do not be um, think of saying, you know, I did I put all the things in there? No, put your passion. You uh, Everything will be shined through and then, and then everything will be great. Um, do not hesitate to click submit. Thank you. And if I can, just to add to that, don't overthink it. Right? If it's something that you're passionate about, something you want to do, just go for it. I just said, I'm doing it. This is something that I want to do. I, I, I know what I can, um, what I'm hoping to learn. I didn't think, oh, who are the other people I'm going to be applying with? Oh, I don't think I have an opportunity. Oh, I didn't do enough. Like, don't doubt yourself. Um, don't overthink it. And like Okay said, just do it. Go for it. Read it. Put your passion in writing um, because it's, you just never know. Right. Thanks again. Well, we have two more minutes, so I'm going to sneak in one last little question. Um, so for someone who's weighing whether or not to apply or might be battling some imposter syndrome, um, what did you take away from your experience that might tip the scales for you or for them to move ahead with their application? Imposter syndrome. Fulbright's I a think, big deal. <laughs> I, think, I think dream yourself in a country and the things you would do while you were there, that will lead you to click, submit that clicking, you know? Think about you were somewhere in the world and you do things that, you know, um, that imagine yourself uh, in a country. Um, I think that will lead, lead you to the, uh, until end of the uh, application. So that would be my advice. I think for me, um... I don't know if I ever got over imposter syndrome and even being here, I don't think I am over it. Um, but I think that for me, I just kept reminding myself of like the potential positive impact that doing it could have on my students, on my colleagues. You know, that's why I'm showing up here tonight is <laughs> because I would love to share my experiences if they're helpful with you all. So um, I just try to not focus on myself and think about like why, why I'm doing this and who it's going to help. Yeah, I pretty much, I think uh, the Myla panelists, you know, fellow panelists um, pretty much said it. It's just, just know you can, you know what I mean? And, and what you can bring back 
And to me, that's the most thing. And from a district level, just imagine, you know, what changes that you believe. And like, and just like OK said, just position, posi you know, visualize yourself in that country and doing those things and what you're going to learn and, and what you're going to bring back. And like Fallon, it's I'm still in there. Right. So you're still like, wow, I did it. And and my thoughts matter. And what I'm bringing back is making change. So just, you know, it's OK. You know what I mean? And it's a whirlwind, but it, it's something that. Go for it, because what no words can describe what you bring back from it. Great. Those are wonderful words to end our webinar on today. Um, <clears throat> so everybody, um, this concludes our webinar for the day. Uh, thank you for attending. Uh, please follow us at um, Fulbright Teach on Twitter and Facebook for more information on applications for the 2024-2025 cycle of Fulbright Teacher Exchanges. And for additional professional development opportunities, please check out the U.S. Department of State's teacher suite of free open online courses for K-12 educators. Also, mark your calendars, save the date for the U.S. Department of State's annual global teaching dialogue taking place from July 23rd through 24th. And lastly, again, for more information about the Fulbright Teacher Exchanges that you heard today, visit www.fulbrightteacherexchanges.org or email us at fulbrightteach at irix.org. Thank you again to our three dear alumni for joining us today and for sharing your experiences. And thank you, everybody, for joining. We hope to see your application soon. Good luck.